Hello fellow comic book lovers, collectors, and aficionados. Vin Crew here with my weekly bitch, my back issue comic haul. And uh, yeah, got a lot of stuff to get through here as usual, so I'm um, just going to get cracking at it here. Alright, so first one, let's just start with the obligatory uh, hot book, movie, TV, that sort of thing here. Alright, first one is, apparently they cast a second character or a new character in the Lucifer show coming up. And that is, she is going to be played by Le Lena Esco, and the character's name is Maze, who makes her first appearance in this book right here, Sandman 22. I don't have a lot of hopes for Lucifer, I really don't. I want it to work, but boy, I hope it's better than, than Constantine. All right, um, next book, or the next rumor that's going around is that apparently, and I do I've shown that this book a hundred times, and I didn't want to dig it out again. Is it? Believe it or not, Damian Wayne is going to uh, show up in the Arrow show, and the reason they think so is that people that are part of the show leaked um, out that there's going to be a character at the end of this season who's going to be named Damian, but it's going to—they keep calling it Dark Damian, and they're associating that. They're making the leap. The Dark Knight, Damien, that's to get to Damien Wayne. However, one thing that I, I did a little bit of quick research, and there's actually a character called Damien Dark, <laughs> D-A-R-H-K, who makes his first appearance right here in Titans number two, or number one, excuse me. There's two covers there, uh, right here. And the, the guy's an antagonist. This guy is supposed to be an antagonist in the Arrow show um, and uh, part of the Hive. And I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me to see Damian Wayne in, in, in Arrow. It makes so much more sense to see him in, in Gotham or something. I don't know. I mean, they introduce a little bit with Red Hood and the Graysons and whatnot. So I, I don't know. I could be way off on that. But like I said, that's just a rumor. All right. Speaking of Arrow and Flash... Um, one thing that I thought was interesting, I ended up Googling this last night, is that we, I love that Cisco, uh, Ramon's character in, in Flash, and we all know he's eventually going to become Vibe, who the first Vibe makes his appearance here in, and Justice League Annual Number 2. However, he goes by the name of Paco Ramon, not Cisco Ramon. If you want Cisco Ramon's first appearance, which is the name of the character in the Flash show. It, his appearance is right here. The New 52 Free Comic Book Day that uh, came out in, I don't know, 2011 or 12 or something like that. So, All right, so I hope that makes sense. All right, um, speaking once again, what they did is they ended up um, casting a, um, or they going, they're going to create a show, like a Justice League kind of a show. I use that term loosely with a bunch of different characters in it. And three characters they did mention were uh, Firestorm and a uh, Adam from uh, the Flash TV and Flash and Arrow shows, and also Captain Cold. So, um, But that started the discussion once again with who else could show up in this. And, of course, number one thing is everybody wants Blue Beetle, Ted Cord, to show up. I couldn't find my 83. I, I promise you I do own it. I just I can't find it in my Carlton box for some reason. I hope it's there. I hope I still have it. But this is 84. This is his second appearance. But they also are bringing Jaime Reyes up. And if you're interested, Jaime Reyes' first appearance is in this book right here, Infinite Crisis 3. There's three covers to this. Uh, that one's my personal favorite. And then there's the second sketch, uh, second print sketch variant to that. So... All right, and then the last one is we do have um, Rosario Dawson. Uh, she teased this a while back that she was going to be part of the Daredevil show, except she just wouldn't release what character she was going to be. And it turns out that she's going to be Claire Temple, who makes her first appearance in Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, number two. All right. Um, so I hope that makes sense. And then there's some fun hot books out there that I've got them all. I just need to get to my shop and pick them up is, uh, Secret Origins number 10 and, uh, Batgirls at 39, I think. And, um, yeah, Silk and Spider-Gwen and is it the Descendants, the Descenders at Jeff Lemire? 
nice books that are getting some attention because they're books, not because it's a movie or whatever the case is. So, all right. So, what I thought I would do now is I would touch on um, a, uh, instead of doing my undervalued books, these are all still undervalued books, but what I thought I would do is I would focus on three characters uh, that, that I think have some confusion as to their history and whatnot. And the first character I wanted to uh, talk about was this, this character right here, Valkyrie. And she makes her first appearance. There's no disputing it in this book right here, Avengers 83. However, here's where the confusion starts to get involved, is that this is not the same Valkyrie that appears in the Defenders and any of that other stuff. This is a one-shot. This is the Enchantress. And what you need to do is you need to think of Valkyrie as more of an essence or a, uh, um, a uh, spirit type of thing that inhabits bodies and, uh, and takes over them, uh, uses them kind of like as vessels type of a thing. And the first one to, ha to do this with was the Enchantress in 83. She obviously lost, and she wanted to take revenge on the Hulk. And so the next uh, version of the Valkyrie shows up right here in Avengers, or excuse me, Hulk 142, and, oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, the Avengers, this, uh, she, this was in, uh, December of 70, and Samantha Parrington, this version right here, the second version, came out in 1971 in Hulk 142, and then she doesn't make another appearance until this book right here, Defenders Volume 2, Number 2, she is now the Valkyrie again, all right? Then there's the third and probably arguably the most known of all the, the Valkyrie essences, and that is Barbara Norris, who actually becomes Valkyrie in Defenders 4 in uh, 1972. Uh, uh, however, her first appearance, and now this really gets confusing, is in this book right here, Incredible Hulk 125, Barbara Norris's first appearance shows up in this book right here, which actually predates Avengers 83. This book came out in March of 70, and this one came out in December of 70. So, interesting and confusing, but if you want the three versions, that's them right there. My favorite by far is Barbara Norris. All right, so uh, the next one I thought I would touch on would be um, Zatanna. And Zatanna... There's no confusion on what her first appearance is. It's in Hawkman number four. I don't own that book. The closest I have to this, Hawk four, is that book right there, Supergirl number five, which retells the uh, story in Hawk four, Hawkman four. But where it gets confusing is her next appearances. Uh, and if you look at comic, totalcomicmayhem.com, and if you look at comicdatabase.com, they really go through this quite well and in depth. And so this, her second appearance is in this book right here, Detective 336. And this apparently is Zatanna right there, that witch. All right? Her, in that book came out, uh, Detective 336 came out in 19, February of 1965. The next time Zatanna appears is in this book right here, Adam number 19. This is her third appearance and her second cover appearance, technically. And this came out in uh, June, July of 65. Her f uh, and let me back this up just a second. What these this does is there's a five-issue story arc, and it starts in Detective 336 and goes through these next books here, where she is trying to find her father Zatara, I believe is how you pronounce it. And the third part of the story is Green Lantern 42, which comes out in January, came out in January of 66. The fourth part of the series is in Detective 355, which came out in September of 66. And the last and kind of confusing issue is Justice League 51, which came out in February of 67. And why I touched on confusion as a word is that until this book right here, you did not know that this was Zatanna in this book. They retcon it and explain that this is Zatanna right here. So you don't find out that it's Zatanna for almost, well, for exactly two years. 
So that's where the confusion lies. If you want her tr second true appearance is in this book right here, Detective 336. Hope that makes sense. All right, so moving along here, um, went back to my shop that does these long boxes um, and does me a pretty good deal. Ended up picking up 358 books and I paid $60. So it cost me what, 16, 17 cents a book. I'm not going to bore you with all of what I bought, but I just wanted to highlight some of the cooler stuff that uh, was part of that. All right. So, in a lot of these first ones are going to be doubles. This one is the Crisis on Infinite Earths Index. And what this does is it goes in and explains all the history of the Crisis on Infinite Earth. Uh, Howler Mouse, Tim, did a fantastic explanation of this book. I would highly suggest looking at his video on that. This is a double. I would strongly suggest if anybody's a crisis fan that they have this in their collection. Hint, hint, if anybody wants to trade, I guess. But, all right, found another X-Man 15, first onslaught. Sure, I buy one last time, and now they come at 16 cents each. Found a Detective 876. I'll pick up these Jacques Schneider books all day long for 16 cents. Found another copy of Battle Scars number one, first cheese and son of... Um, uh, Fury, um, Batman 450 with the classic Joker cover, speaking of Joker cover, Booster Gold number five, that one is not a double, but I just love that cover, it redoes the, it makes homage to the killing joke, in fact, uh, there was comic book something investment, did a little thing on this after I found it, that's pretty cool, um, Here's another Joker cover. This is a duplicate. I don't know if that's an Adam Hughes cover or not, but look at that. Jo Wonder Woman is Joker. Uh, found another copy of Wonder Woman 7 and 8. They did not have a 9. Found another copy of Batman and the Outsiders, number 1. All right. Found the limited sketch cover to Astonishing X-Men, number 7. Uh, found Agent X, number 7. The only reason I'm showing this one is it does have Squirrel Girl on the cover and uh, Taskmaster and a few other people I'm not real familiar with. But this is um, uh, Age of Heroes number three. Uh, this I was happy to find, Alias number four. This is actually part one of where Purple Man makes his appearance in Alias. And if you haven't read this arc, oh my God, is it just... It's out there. <laughs> um, they did not have 25, but they had 26 and 27. All right. Um, this book I'd been looking for for a little while. This is uh, Avengers the Initiative. It's a one shot featuring Reptile. This is actually Reptile's first appearances in this book right here. Uh, Reptile, I mean, this is a character that showed up on cartoons with the Superhero Squad. He's been in, I think, over 100 comics. So. It's a character that's been around for a little while. Speaking of some more, I found a whole long run of the initiatives, uh, but that's the Scully ver variant of 13. This is the zombie variant of 18. Uh, speaking of variants, I found the 70th anniversary of volume five of number one of Black Panther. This is the second print of number one and the regular version, and then I also own the other variant, so I now own all uh, five versions of that cover. Uh, J. Scott Campbell. Speaking of J. Scott Campbell, here's number two and number four. Um, comic fan, just I believe that's the name of his channel. The guy out in California just mentioned this in his comic in his uh, recent video. I've been looking this for this for a little while. This is Captain America Sentinel of Liberty, number eight and number nine. This is the first time Falcon actually dons Captain America garb, this shield, and takes over his cap. So that wasn't in this new cap thing. So, um, all right, moving along. Oh, boy, there's no easy way to do this. Oh, found a... Uh, Issue number two of Cosmic Powers Unlimited featuring Silver Surfer. I, 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 the reason I grabbed this at first was it was only four issues. It was complete. And I love Howard the Duck. Anything with Hodu on it, I will definitely pick up. But this is called Fear Itself, Fearsome 4. And what these are is they're actually cover swipes. You can tell for sure on that one. That's uh, Fantastic Four number one. 
here's the cover swipe to Fantastic Four where that new version, that new team comes out with Spider-Man, Wolverine, Hulk, and Ghost Rider. And I'm not sure what the cover swipes to 1 and 4 are, but I thought that was cool. Uh, finished my run of Morlocks. Here's number 2. I already own number 1, and they didn't have another number 1. Number 3 and number 4, so I do have that mini complete. Still working on my Miss Marvel. I love that cover. That's the annual. Uh, Venom 20. Um, anything in human right now, and I would high, strongly suggest if you can find in human number five right now, that's the first appearance of Naja, 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 uh, N A J A. They, that's the character that they believe Rena or Reina from Agents of Shield is that character. I bought that. It's I'm just waiting for it to come. Um, so I'll feature it in a future bitch. Um, but here's some Inhuman War of Kings. This is Ascension, the uh, Baron cover, and the regular cover to number one with Darkhawk. Uh, number six and Darkhawk number one. All right. Uh, found another copy. This is a double of Wolverine number 131. This is the recall version. This does have the racial slur in it. So if anyone's interested in a copy of that, a recall book. Here's the second print variant to Prologue of World War Hulk. I grabbed this because considering how hot that second print of Hulk 92 is right now, I don't know, for 16 cents, I didn't see how I could go wrong with this. This is Clayton Crane variant to X-Force 22. Uh, Animal Man number nine. Anything on that first ten or eleven issues of the Grant Morrison run, I'll snatch that up anytime. Uh, a lot of new fifty-two stuff for sixteen cents. I found a Batgirl number nineteen. This is a series I'm just starting to work on now. This is the Dark Knight. This is the Finch run. Really, I'm digging his work right now. Um, so, um, anybody has any of these they want to trade, hit me up. Uh, here's Batman and Robin, number 10 out of the new 52, number 17, number 21, number 22, Catwoman, 24 with Two-Face, and 26 with Two-Face, 16 cents each. All right, Birds of Prey, volume 2, number 6, volume 3, number 4, this is the Art Germ cover, I believe, on that. Um... Brightest Day 17. I love that Firestorm cover. Um, what else did I grab here? Oh, there's another stack somewhere. Oh, it's right there. Sorry. All right. Speaking of art germ stuff, picked up. Uh, they had almost a complete run of this series. This is Web, The Web. There's number one. more organized here. Number God. number two number three number five man I love these covers. Number six really love that one and number nine. Anything art germ right now I'm snatching up. They had some Silver Age World's Finest in there for some reason, too, and I grabbed them all. I own almost every one of these, but there's 155, 159, 172, 161, and 183 were all there, so grab those. Last issue of the Suicide Squad, Volume 1, uh, Power Girl number 6. Madam Xanadu, this is the last issue of that series. Her first series was just that one shot. And then this is her first real full series, 129 issues. Found the last issue of Firestorm, issue 100. Just love these covers. And this is a little short little mini that retells uh, Dead Man, uh, Neil Adams' Dead Man, Strange Adventures, 205 to what, 216 or something like that. Um, but... This is a character that I think really would have a chance of showing up in that sh that show. They've talked about Dead Man making a, uh, a movie or TV appearance for quite some time, but I think that Arrow or that uh, Firestorm, Adam, Captain Boomerang or Captain Cold show that could easily I could see Dead Man fit into that. 
Uh, happy to find this. This is issue number one of the first four issue mini series of Catwoman. So I now own a complete series one and series three. I'm still working on my series two. Grab the whole bunch of Captain Adam. This is the only one I really wanted to feature. There is some discussion, and I did order the other one, whether it's this issue number 12 or annual number one, which is the first appearance of Major Force, who is a person that ends up killing Kyle Rayner's girlfriend and shoves him shoves her in the fridge pretty pretty graphic back in that or shocking back in those days so um but his first appearance is in either 12 or annual number one like i said i do have annual one coming all right and then i picked up uh another wizard half i'll pick them up anytime i can get them for dirt cheap that's our arcanum that one i actually own already caliber presents four and seven uh, found another Cowboy Ninja Viking, uh, issue number five. So now I own issue one and five. See what happens with that when the movie comes out. Danger Girl and the Army of Darkness, number one. That's the J. Scott Campbell cover. Uh, Dark Horse Presents, uh, annual 99. Any of these annuals, they're kind of hard to find of that. Um, a whole bunch of uh, Michael Turner stuff here. Let me get these out of the way. All right, Fathom number 13. This is out of the Top Cow series. Uh, issue number zero out of the Aspen series. Issue two, issue three. I'll pick up anything, Turner. Uh, issue two of Fathom, Killian's Tide, especially for 16 cents. Fathom Beginnings number one. Fathom, Don, Fathom Cannon, Don of War <laughs> number one. And a couple of free comic book day ones with his cover on them. There's 2013 and 2006, I believe that is. Maybe somebody can explain to me why these books are so, they booked for so much money. This is G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, the convention special. This is the 2001 version, which books for $15? I don't get that. But this one also happens to be signed by, is it Josh? Yeah, Josh Blaylock, too, right there. So that was kind of cool. No letter of authenticity, but what the heck. Um, here is the 1 in 15 Trevor Harsane virgin cover to Hypernaturals. And the Wesley Craig 1 in 20 virgin cover to number 3 of the Hypernaturals. Uh, free comic book day of Lock and Key. Witchblade 140 and Witchblade and Punisher, beautiful Lesnar cover, um, number one. Uh, Vengeance of Vampirella, this is the preview ash can list limited to 3,000. And uh, oh, here's another Aspen, number one, another Turner cover. All right, and then there was a couple, an old couple that came in there while I was digging through the guy's long boxes. And the guy who wanted to sell their collection and the guy didn't want them. So the couple started walking out, and I caught them. I said, whoa, you know, I'll look at your books. And they were beat to heck, and they were mostly Walt Disney kind of stuff. But in, there was one book that caught my eye, and I said, well, what do you want for this one book? And they said, just take it. And I went, really? And they go, yeah. And So I got Red Wolf number one for free from 1972. And this is in really pretty decent shape. It's The other ones are just beat to hell. This one's probably... Uh, a VG minus, I don't know. Um, and then I did end up buying this book here that finally showed up. This is Justice League of America 39. And the reason I'm showing this book is that similar to last week where I showed that uh, Avengers, this book gives me a complete run of the Justice League of America series one from issue 18 until it ends. Um, and I only need 12 uh, to finish that whole series. So I'm getting closer and closer. I know I'll never get issues one, two, three, four, and five, but if I could get six on, I'd be happy with that. All right, then the last undervalued um, stuff I wanted to talk about was, believe it or not, Fink Fang Foom. And as we know, Fink Fang Foom made his Fin Fang Foom made his first appearance in Strange Tales '89, which I don't own that book. Clint Hero Hunter, I know does. I'm super jealous, but his second appearance is in this book right here. Fantasy Masterpiece number two, uh, which came out in like 66 or 67, something like that. And his third appearance, which probably was the book that got the most traction there for a little while, is this book right here, Where Monsters Dwell. 
these both reprint um, the first uh, the first uh, Strange Tales eighty nine. These are both reprints. But if you want Fin Fang Foom's first or second solo story that's uh, uh, original, it shows up in this book right here, Astonishing Tales twenty three, which came out in nineteen seventy four. This is where he battles uh, Colossus. Uh, so, all right. Um, other than that, that's it. That's Vin Crew signing off, saying thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it.